This is The Disputa by Raphael Sanzio. It was created in 1510 uh, for the Vatican. Uh, when looking at it, you can kind of see that it has a lot of attention to detail in all the figures and the poses therein, um, because they all look very natural, very, you know, realistic and very cool kind of that they're that detailed, you know, and um, it shows a lot of attention to detail and a lot of hard work on the part of Raphael. Um, according to one of my sources uh, that has a quote that goes, the structure of the composition is characterized by extreme clarity and simplicity, which Raphael achieved through sketches, studies, and drawings containing notable differences in poses. Um, which mm, looks like he did his research pretty well, because looking at it, you can see a lot of different poses from multiple characters, and they're all very reminiscent of actual people. So. Yeah, as far as his research went, it was uh, pretty good because he was able to create something like this. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, another thing that was kind of important to note about his painting is the use of color. Because um, as one of my other sources goes, the use of color plays a vital role of the painting. First, the level of intensity is distinguished by the colors of the individuals clouds and the courtyard being more intense while the background landscape and the sky and the blue sky is more dull in comparison this assists the painting by giving it more sense of depth and space thus bringing out the main attention to stand out even more color is also used to symbolize the value of individual figures christ in the center is white to symbolize his perfection and the cleanliness and blue garments and cleanliness while blue garments, such as the Virgin Mary's, are used to define purity and divinity, gold, however, is used to define the level of importance of the earthly church figures. The best example would be the first of the four doctors of the church, Pope Gregory I, who is dressed in all gold. Uh, you can notice Pope Gregory, the one dressed in all gold they're talking about in the bottom right of the painting, and the Virgin Mary is seated to the left of Jesus, which you can see up there. Um, <coughs> another thing to note was... The, one of the most noticeable aspects of the disputa would be the composition and symmetry. The Trinity, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the altar are all lined vertically in the middle. God the Father would be seen as the superior, while the altar is at the least of the four. The composition and placement of all elements gives a sense of harmony, movement, and unity. Um, I didn't really agree with that, because it looks sort of like it all fits together, you know, and it's all just, you know, it just works, you know, I guess. Um, but as for the color thing, I actually really do agree with that because after, like, looking at it for a while, you can actually kind of notice that the plainness of the background, like how the sky is kind of like a faded blue, it's almost white even, it kind of, like, pales in comparison to, you know, like the clouds and, you know, God and all of the apostles and the angels floating above us. And even the you know people on below on the earth, they kind of stand out in comparison to the background, which was um, made to be plain in comparison to them, so that they would stand out, which was done very well, um, in my opinion. Um, but yes, <coughs> um, what else was there? Uh, but at this point, you're probably wondering what the meaning is behind this work, and um, as one of my sources goes again with this quote. It um, explains the meaning, basically. Upon first glance, you will notice that the fresco painting is divided into two sections, the top half taking place in the sky and the bottom on earth. This is meant to represent a scene that spans between heaven and earth. The heavenly section of the painting features Christ on the heavenly throne, flanked by important biblical figures such as John the Baptist, the Virgin Mary, Adam, Moses, Jacob, and God, the Father above him. The earthly portion of the painting is decorated with an altar in the center, surrounded by theologians and important Catholic church figures debating the practice of transubstantiation, bread and wine sacrament. Participants of the debate include the original four doctors of the church with Pope Augustine and Pope Ambrose on the right with Pope Gregory and Jerome on the left. Which um, Here you can see Pope Gregory and Pope Jerome. Also, fun fact, Raphael put himself in the painting. You can see him right next to Pope Gregory the Great. Uh, <coughs> And here you can see, you know, Pope Ambrose and Augustine on the right. And uh, also there's um, 
the one guy with the golden robe. So there's that. Um, but yeah. Uh, although a magnificent dynamic painting, Raphael's main attention to the disputa was to give the public a dark reminder of the judgment day that was approaching. The disputa is based on a verse from Revelations 1 7. Amid the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the people of the earth will lament him. Um, this I can kind of see because it does look like the second coming because it looks like, you know, God's descending down from heaven, you know, and it doesn't look like some Judgment Day paintings like uh, the one by Michelangelo, The Last Judgment, which was a little more chaotic in nature. This one seems sort of more light and peaceful, but... It still has sort of like a Judgment Day vibe, like, you know, the Second Coming and stuff like that, but it's more peaceful, but I, I generally agree with that, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Overall, I really liked this painting because it was very well done, as most of Raphael's things, uh, paintings are, but uh, besides that, it was really fun to, you know, look at and research, and uh, yeah, anyway, it's a cool painting. And uh, that's it.